Hi, my name is Doug Schneider, and I want to welcome you back to a fifth episode of Real Hi-Fi. And today I'm going to talk about something I didn't think I would talk about, and that is, can you tell the difference between lossless and lossy music files? So why I didn't think I'd be addressing this topic is, I thought most people would just welcome lossless music files versus lossy ones. Increased quality and no extra cost? Why not? But too often in the last week or two, I've been reading articles that are questioning the need for lossless music files to the point that they're saying we don't need them and that people won't be able to hear the difference over lossy. One article really jumped out at me and it's on macworld.com and it's written by uh, Jason Cross who I guess is a tech blogger and it's called No One Actually Needs High Res Apple Music Audio. Now in here he makes some good points and one is that modern lossy compression schemes are amazing. You won't get an argument from me. But he talks about the high fidelity audio graveyard and that it's bad to pursue better sound. But there was one paragraph that really leapt to the forefront for me and that it goes like this. Maybe one in a thousand people have hearing that is good enough and trained well enough to pick out the differences. I don't know where he got the one in a thousand from. He doesn't cite any study. I've never seen one. Even if you do, you need a listening pipeline capable of faithfully reproducing such subtle differences. So he's admitting the differences are there, even if they're subtle. Decoders, amplifiers, and speakers, or headphones. Oh, and you need to be in a good listening environment too. Well, no shit, Jason. Most audiophiles, or at least people who are into music and sound reproduction, have a pretty good audio system, and they have it in an okay room. So is this really news? Now, putting that article and others like it aside, I want to get into some reasons I believe that, for the most part, you're going to be able to tell the difference between a lossless and a lossy file. That said, you're not going to be able to tell the difference all the time. I've been there. I've done the test, lossless versus lossy, and I couldn't tell them apart, and neither could others. Lossy compression can be that good. But other times, it was dead easy to tell them apart, and I think there are lessons to be learned as to why that date back to Suzanne Vega's Solitude Standing. So what is it about Solitude Standing we can learn from? Well, if you look at the history of MP3, you'll find a research scientist named Carl Heinz Brandenburg. Now, he was working on the original MP3 encoder in the 1990s, and as the story goes, he played Tom's Diner a track on this through the original encoder and found out it butchered the song, made Vega's voice, I guess, sound distorted and really unnatural. So the team used Tom's Diner as more or less a benchmark to fine tune the original MP3 encoder. Obviously, we've come very far from the encoders of the 1990s. The ones we have today are superior and many times amazing. But there are still times that I can easily hear the difference between a lossy and lossless file. And I know this because over the years, people have sent me music files. Hey, Doug, listen to this file. I think you'll like it or listen for this or whatever. And invariably, they'll send me a lossy file because it's just easier to do. And I'll listen to the version they sent me and sometimes I'll know the song already and or I'll have access to a lossless version. Now, the thing I trigger into the most are the high frequencies. And I would say 60 to 70% of the time, I hear kind of a swirly sound or a phasey unclear sound or a sharpness distortion or, or just some other artifact. And it triggers me into something's wrong with this song. And yes, the lossless won't have that, yet the lossy will. And I think the lesson to take from what happened with Tom's Diner and that sort of thing is, now remember, lossy files discard information that they hope you're not going to be able to hear. But what if they discard information you can hear or distort information you hear? And I think that's the reason why oftentimes we can tell the difference between lossy files versus lossless ones because they have damaged the original music file in some ways. And in other times, it hasn't been damaged enough to affect what we hear. With all that said, somebody could just discard it and say, well, that's just some guy talking, just like a tech blogger. 100% true. So I want to leave you with a couple parting thoughts. One is remember this about a lossy compression scheme. It relies on permanently discarding data that they hope you won't hear or notice in some way. But if a distortion is going to enter the playback chain, it's going to be through a lossy compression scheme, not a lossless one. Given the choice, I will always choose a lossless compression scheme. Next, listening. I don't have my ego tied up in lossless versus lossy. I will take a blind test anytime if somebody wants to compare a lossy format against a lossless one. And by blind, I mean conceal the sources. 
If I can't tell the difference, it says more about the quality of the compression than it does my ears. And I believe you should do the same. Listen to the music and as much of it as you can to see if you can hear the differences. Don't just believe what somebody says. And maybe throw in Tom's Diner. See how it holds up after all these years. Thank you for watching.